so this time I'm just say this is my first time trying to comment on this video so I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do next <laughs> alright so right now I had the I had your attacks and the enemy's attacks inside the battle program but here I'm making a new program for that so I'm calling it your a1 UATK and I'm copying in the other program but I'm gonna delete everything except the parts with your attacks so you can copy using the recall function So it's pretty much going to do the same thing, but it's just going to do it in a separate program. Makes it easier to add in new stuff later. I'm putting in a return so it goes back to the main program. And then at the very end, you don't need a return, because when it ends the program, it's the same as a return. And now on your turn, instead of having that menu and choosing your attacks, it's just going to call the program that has your attacks now. And then... All you know is that when you call that program, it'll return with a certain amount of damage. So you subtract that damage from the enemy's life and then display it. And then repeat the loop. Now I can delete out the parts with your attacks from the main battle program. And I'm going to do the same thing with the enemy's attacks. I'm not copying it this time because there really wasn't that much for the enemy's attack. So. But yeah, I'm going to call a program for the enemy's attacks and then it used to know that program should return a certain amount of damage in a variable called D and then you subtract off that damage from your life and store it and I'm gonna display that how much it hurt so. Pretty much, this is going to make it easier to add in, like, different attack sets and different battles, because you can just do it in the separate attack program and test what, like, which battle you're on, and then, based on that, choose different attacks and different, yeah, different attacks. <laughs> Okay, I pretty much copied the the what was in the enemy attack section into the separate program, and then I cut out a lot of 
testing, which I guess isn't particularly exciting anyway. <laughs> the game can be pretty exciting when it's like when you have one life and then he has one life. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna make a main program to hold the story. And I'm gonna store which battle you are on right now in a variable called theta. So that's just my preference, but you can pick any variable, but you just wanna make sure you don't use it somewhere else. So you would type your story where it says, type your story here. <laughs> and so I typed my story there. <laughs> and now I call the battle program. And in this program now, I test if you lost. And if you lost, then I'm going to display some message and right now there's no continue so I'm putting stop which means it just ends the program and if you didn't lose then it just continues on so what it's showing now is after the part where you didn't lose so and so now I'm running the main program Oh, there's a typo. <laughs> and there's another typo. Alright. Oh, it looks kind of weird when it just starts and it shows life, so I'm gonna have it say battle before it starts. Fixing the typos. <laughs> so now it's his battle. <laughs> Alright, so I won, and so now, so it continues on with the story. <laughs> I think we're going to go in and change that display, because now it doesn't need to say that you won inside the battle program. Yeah. So just rush and clear it. <laughs> Let's see. Oh man, I'm losing. Oh, <laughs> oh I lost. <laughs> and how am I going to save the world like that? <laughs> yep, but... So it works if you lose. <laughs> Next time I'm going to add in multiple battles and some new attacks. So.